Here's a look back at the PREMG era and how it transformed not only Wipro and the Indian software landscape, but also redefined the art of giving. A young electrical engineering student at Stanford in 1966, Azim Premji got a phone call from India. His father had passed away. The 21-year-old had no option but to take the mantle and grow the business. There was no dearth of skeptics. At your first AGM, a shareholder said, Mr. Premji, you should sh sell your shareholding and give it to more mature management because there's no way a person of your age and experience can lead this company. If you were to meet that shareholder today, what would you say to him? Poor fellow's dead. So <laughs> I cannot meet him. Well, I think he has to judge us in terms of what we have achieved. And I think he was able to do that 10 years later and 15 years later. Mm -hmm. He was one of our earlier shareholders. And I think it was a good comment which he made because it really got my determination up to prove him wrong. Did you for a second consider what he had said to you? No. But Premji had his task cut out. The Western India Palm Refined Oil Limited was not in the pink of its health. Premji had to re-engineer the entire business model. The most frustrating thing was that we were a pure commodity company. Mm. We were in vegetable oils, you know, we were in oil seed crushing. We didn't have a brand. We sold to wholesalers. So we didn't have a channel. So it was a question of re-engineering the entire business model of the company to build a brand and to build uh, loyal and deep-rooted distribution channels which reach the consumer, not the trader. I think that was the most important re-engineering we had to go through with the company. The turning point came 13 years after Premji took charge. In 1979, US giant IBM was forced out of India and Premji saw an opening. He took the bold step of diversifying what was till then a commodity company into a computer company. And we just zeroed in on uh, computers because the opportunity was there. A leader in the market had exited the country and we were able to put an act together. We invested a lot in R&D, we invested a lot in application software and we were an instant hit and uh, we, we fed on that success and we plowed back the cash flow from the success to finally build a global software uh, export business. The rest, as they say, is history. Premji took the million dollar commodity company and transformed it into a 17 billion dollar software giant. Premji explains the key to his success in very simple terms. Always have your ear to the ground. I read a story somewhere that you would actually sit in a cycle rickshaw and visit the alleys in Chandni Chowk along with your sales team. Is that accurate? Yes, but you know, we were originally in consumer products. And that's the nerve center of the company. But you actually did they this. they don't teach you in business school. I did that till about even 10, 12 years back. Hmm. Then I got too visible, so I was not getting unbiased reports in the marketplace. I thought it was counterproductive then. That seems a far cry from the Azim Premji that most people seem to perceive or that most people seem to think of. There's almost an air of inaccessibility. Where do you think that's, that, that perception comes from? I'm more inaccessible to from. the press. I'm very accessible to everyone else. Premji is more than just a doyen in the business world. He's one of India's first business leaders to sign the Gates Buffett Giving Pledge to give away 50% of his personal wealth to social causes. I do believe that he is a role model uh, not only for IT industry, he is a role model for the industrial sector and for the country per se, that how achievement can be made with integrity and ultimately the money which we make is really a, a, in trust with us to be used for philanthropy and other places where it is needed most. It has been a remarkable half century by Azim Premji at Wipro and he continues to bat at the crease. Bureau Report, CNBC TV 18.